Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Grassroots Chats. Wonderful, 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 as Mike likes to tell me, always using the wonderful word. In this episode, we are going to talk about the wonderful achievements of Arsenal and Tottenham, especially with the season that they were written off. After that, we shall have a discussion about the weekend games. Then we go into play and flop and fixtures and predictions. Welcoming back to the studio, Big Steve. How have you been, sir? You are good. Welcome back. And of course, we have the angry one, the very angry dunk this week, and Mr. Hinder. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Yeah, kosher. Ladies and gentlemen, if if you like what you see, what you hear, please subscribe, hit that notification button, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and every other platform that you may find us. Okay, let's go straight into it, people. I'm going to start with the angry one. The angry one made a comment a couple of weeks ago saying that Arsenal probably didn't start the season thinking they were finishing the top four. I mean, there's still five more games, or sorry, four more games. But regardless of how it turns out, do you still think the decision or the plan wasn't to finish in the top four? Yeah, that, was, that wasn't the, the plan. The plan was to get into Europe. But as, as um, events would transpire, we've got a chance at top four now. So we're going to go for it. You could argue that if we really wanted to go for it in January, we'd have done something. But the counter argument to that was they couldn't find anybody that they wanted. But I think it's just that it wasn't in the plan. So if they get top four, great. If they don't get top four, then, you, then you're on course. So I think we're ahead of schedule, or at least the club schedule. Dunk, do you still believe Tottenham is going to finish over Arsenal with the way things are going? Uh, Arsenal have definitely got a chance. I'm, I'm not going to flip-flop though. I'm going to stick with Spurs. Uh, so they, they've, they've still got that crunch game coming up. Uh, and I think Spurs are going to take it, yeah. So, unfortunately for the Arsenal boys, you know. No, 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 I've got nothing personal in this battle. I'm just, uh, yeah, I put my money on Spurs. I'm going to stick with it. I mean, when you look at the next fixture, Spurs go away to Liverpool and Arsenal play your beloved Leeds dunk. Once again, are you sure Tottenham is going to finish above Arsenal? Well, they're both going to lose. <laughs> Arsenal got no chance against Leeds, have they? And obviously Spurs aren't going to beat Liverpool. I could actually, I could see Spurs. Maybe they they might be the one to uh, burst the Liverpool bubble. Might be able to get a point there. Well, this man always, you know, predicts the future. So we shall see what happens. Big Steve, welcome back. At some point in one of our episodes, you actually gave Ateta manager of the season. From the way things are going with your team and the possibility of finishing the fourth spot. I'm guessing you're telling everybody you were right about trust the process. <laughs> Would I be one to gloat? No, <laughs> we haven't got to the end of the season yet. Um, yeah, I still stand by my statement that if he does get top four, possibly top three, the way Chelsea are going, um, yeah, I'd give him manager of the season using his resources, the squad and everything like that. Definitely. Well, manager of the season is a big shout though. Um, you, when normally when you talk about manager of the season, you're talking about tactics, strategy, you know, blending the team. You are the highest spenders in the transfer market. Let's not forget that come the summer. So surely you should have been expecting the fourth spot. No. I think at the beginning of the season, at a push, I reckon they were saying top six to him minimum. Um, the fact that he's going to get, could potentially got top four. Um, and I know people talk about, yeah, we spent the most amount of money, but that was across six players. Yeah, if you equate that to Man City spending a hundred million pound on one player, technically they spent just sixty. How do you work that out? Well, what they said was so uh, they sold. Who did they sell for X amount of money? Pep said in one of his press conferences, mm. and then they got Grealish in. It, it all balanced out to just sixty oh, no. according oh, okay. to his maths. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, he's still Arteta's still got the youngest squad. He's one of the youngest managers in the league. Um, he doesn't have the resources, experience, or knowledge of the game as a manager say, like a Klopp and Guardiola. So if he finishes behind those two in the rest of the league and look at the resources Chelsea have got, I would say I'd have to give him manager of the season because no one's expecting him to be there, especially after the first three games. What, over Klopp when getting quad? Hammered free. What if Klopp gets a quad? So, if, if, he, if he gets the quad, yes. Even, but even I would say in terms of the premiership, in terms of the premiership, I would give it to Arteta because Klopp's, Klopp's five or six years deep with his squad. Okay, well, I like the way Neil is smiling. Like he has something to say that we don't we don't know. But looking at the Arsenal um, v Tottenham battle, um, 
Dunk has gone for Tottenham, still finishing. He says he's not going to flop. Neil, you said Arsenal, I believe? Yeah, Arsenal, I think. I mean, they've got that crunch game coming up, haven't they? It's going to be an important one, regardless of, 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 of how it goes. Their goal difference is nowhere near as good as Spurs. I think we need a whole show on who's going to be manager of the year. But we'll have to leave Steve out on it because I have no idea what his expectations are for manager of the year. But by his notion, it should be fucking Eddie Howe, a hundred million spent and getting someone out of out of a squad. Um, yeah, I don't know. Craziness. So you you clearly don't you do clearly don't even see any point to Big Steve giving us as a manager of the season if they finish fourth. Unless they finish top two, what's the point, right? Like you can't say it's the resources they've got. You look at everybody else down the bottom half of, of the season. You look at uh, Brighton, part of the job he's done there on this huge string budget. You look at Palace and Vieira season, like they're, they're very commendable seasons. This is a, like Arsenal weren't like 15th last season and suddenly in the top four. They're still a, a, an attractive proposition, right? It's the first time in, what, six years, potentially they'll be in the Champions League. But if Klopp does at least the double... Like a league and a, and, a, and a cup, a big cup or, or two big cups, then you know you, you still got to be looking at that for manager of the year and, and getting the signings he made uh, 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 December was fantastic, right? A player that's come straight into the team and set the Liverpool team and and gel perfectly. You can't have a better signing, uh, I think, at Christmas than that. So yeah, it depends what the criteria, but I think that's a that's a full on show that we need to have shortly. Well, we should as well. see. Shortly, oh yeah, we shall see, ladies Season's and gentlemen. Season's almost over. Season is almost over. We shall put that in the works. The angry one, looking at Conte, since everybody's talking about managerial, you know, changes and making the team better. Surely, Conte is pretty much almost done the same thing as Ateta in terms of improving Spurs and putting them in fourth spot, or at least in competition for the fourth spot. No, so I mean, in terms of yes, in terms of where they're where they're at, but they took different routes. So, obviously, he's had less time than Arteta to start off with. Um, but Arteta, what he's done is he's he's basically culled the fat, got rid of all the most of the uh, players that are surplus to requirements, brought, brought a, a load of new players in. But Conte hasn't done that. He's just basically got them working better, more more efficiently, working as a. As a I team mean, he had it. some good transfers yeah, in couple, January. In, in January, but. He called, he got rid of a lot in January. Let's not, let's not be harsh about it. He he cleared a lot of fat out there, but not as much as uh, players Arsenal. that I wouldn't have thought would have gone anywhere. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Your mate Deli Ali, but, <laughs> but, but Deli Ali went. Come on, but but and then Dombele. Yeah, that's true, but not as much as Arsenal. So, um, so yeah, they they are in the same place, but they've but they've come for it by different different routes because Spurs pretty much had a solid team just need to get get rid of a few players, and they've only added what. Kolozowski and uh, I can't remember what the other guy's name was now the, the centre midfielder whereas Arsenal bought a whole new raft of players and all young ones for the future so they look, they're doing it in a different way but in the end it's the same result it's just getting who Is that because Arsenal couldn't attract the players that they wanted? Uh, I don't know They had to get youth players uh, I, I think that's the plan I think that's always been their plan that, that, that's why they've got to tell young manager young squad trust the process all that shit it, it's all just basically some bullshit five year plan, like like we did before with um Wiltshire and that, that lot, you know, that the core English core that none of them did anything. It's, it's the same thing, but it, it might work this time. Who, who who knows? I will say though, Steve, about Arteta, he kind of makes up as he goes along. Like he kind of what has success, but by accident. Like Eddie Nketiah is doing all right now, but he didn't want to play the guy. Last three or four games, he's clearly more of a threat than than Lacquer. But we, but we persisted with Lacquer for donkey's years. Same thing before that, when he first got Saka and ASR in, he was persisting with Pepe and, and William until he had no choice, literally. And then he kind of stumbles on a, on a solution. Could you say that he gives them enough chances so at least when he actually then changes them, nobody can complain instead of having no choice and putting them the other well, place? Why do you care about people complaining? Because your job's on the line. So he's basically... No, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not saying he's worrying about people complaining, but he gives those players, look, I'll give you all the chances possibly and then see what happens. That's, that, that's not good management, is it? Uh, if you need to make a change, you need to make a change. I think what he does is, but he has he has made the change and he's working now. Yeah, but by then, but Laka Laka hadn't scored since December and we were still putting him in. This guy scored four goals all season, two pennies. 
making do, that, do, maybe that's maybe making someone step up to the level to say actually that this guy isn't performing but i can do better than that you've got to give me the chance you've got to give me the chance and then it's continuously going to and then get you up in his game compared to where he were, was how, how he is now okay you've got to think oh. like that's a, a level increase apart from last okay week. but then but, but then even taking into account that he kept playing lokonga when you really once you've lost parta you've really got to play el nene in there really he didn't do it a couple of games we got smashed up a little bit then he suddenly stumbled on el nene like he didn't know he was there and now he's been and now he's been, his last two three games he's been solid some games with man in the match it's like what are you doing I would, say, I would say stumbled upon is a bit harsh. I would say the thing with Enketia and Lacazette is um, up until we lost the three games on the bounce, everyone was happy with Lacazette because he was winning and he was maintaining form. It's only the three, when we'd done the three losses and we didn't score, Lacazette's lack of goals came back into question. Enketia, in the last few games, he wasn't playing with as much energy as what he was doing earlier in the season. And he didn't, I didn't even think he could, the performances he's putting in the last couple of games, he wasn't capable of it. But is he playing because now he's got a chance starting or is he playing because he wants a contract somewhere else and wants to make himself look attractive? Yeah, so there's many things to it. Same result though. So, but I would, so Same again, result though because Laka clearly, as as per his name, ain't going to score you goals. He works hard in that. It's great. But he's not going to score you goals. Yeah, yeah, but that's always been that's always sorry, been a problem. It's sorry, only come as only per come his apart. name. <laughs> what, what, what yeah, it's, it's, it's not his real name, Mike. It's not his real name. Like is his Laka. real name. Laka. Laka. Laka <laughs> okay, but stick it, let's stick to Spurs a bit here. I understand. I mean, there are loads of questions you can ask about Arsenal and Ateta that he has done magic or he hasn't. But sticking to Spurs for a tiny bit. So, Conte, um, Doc, what do you think? Clearly, if you look at the way Harry Kane started the season, then, of course, his connection with Son. Then they had a bit of up-down inconsistency. But now they're looking like they're actually playing for the team. They believe they can get the fourth spot. You believe they'll get the fourth spot. Surely, Conte is pretty much, you would say, he has achieved as much as Ateta. And as Mike pointed out, he has had shorter time to do so. Yeah, like, again, look at Spurs. I like what Anyone know offhand what their league finishes have been the last couple of seasons? I, I can't remember off ham. They've, they've been outside the champion. What have they been like fifth, sixth, that, those kind of positions. Um, so again, for, for Conte, like he, he's a top manager. He he should be able to like the exp expectation would, he's going to raise their even, level. Even with our time, were. even with our time. Uh, he's, he's had most of the season now. Like he's had, he's had a good amount of time now. Um, and again, like I always talk about it there, the new manager bounce, like to get, get some momentum going when you come in, bring some instant changes, get some results. So yeah, I, he probably thought he would have got things done a bit quicker than has happened this season. Uh, but yeah, they seem to be more consistent. Again, they're, they're not looking like they're going to challenge for the title. They, they've still had a couple of results in the, the last couple of weeks, the Brighton, the Brentford, uh, where where they're not looking like they're going to be top top level, but yeah, he's he's got them now. Well, obviously they're on form. They're they're performing definitely performing better than the other teams around them. Um, and, and we didn't really mention earlier, like when we're saying about who's going to get in Arsenal or Spurs. There's the possibility that they, that they both get in because Chelsea apparently are just rolling over for everyone at the minute. That would be lovely. You, you're very upset. You're very upset with Chelsea, aren't you? I'm oh. I'm very upset with Chelsea. Yeah. Can you, can you just tell losing, us why? Can... Losing to Everton, who had 22 percent. Frank Lampard held it as a magnificent display. 22 percent possession. Amazing. What a job he's doing. <laughs> in all honesty, though, that game. I don't know if I was going to touch on that, but that game was a really entertaining game to watch. I thought it, I didn't think Everton played like they only had 22%. Every time they went forward, they looked really dangerous. Whereas I watched the Arsenal-West Ham game, and every time both teams went forward, no one looked dangerous at all. It was just literally a really a boring game. And Ketty had missed a really easy chance and looked really tired after about 60, 70 minutes. I thought he should have come off, and he, and he didn't. But that just comes to the, the strength of the squad isn't big enough. But Everton really, like that they dug in, but they just did look like they had more uh, chances than uh, than Chelsea in that game, although Chelsea dominated the game. But there's no point of having the ball if you can't do fuck, fuck all with it, right? True. We'll talk about more of these fixtures when we actually get to the fixture segment. The question I do want you to answer, Neil, is with all this talk about Arteta and Conte, who's done better, who's done a better job this season with the teams. Now, the question is, if you are, let's say you're, Let's say Sheffield Wednesday is at the Premier League and they're looking for a manager and it's between Ateta and Conte. Based on what they've done this season, who would you pick? 
So I'm going for the guy with the hair transplant or the guy that dyes the hair. Um, I mean, they're both older than me, but look younger than me. Um, I would go with Conte. I think he's got better connections. I think the style of football that he plays to me is more attractive than Arteta's. Uh, he's, uh, Conte wants to get the ball quickly forward and use the, count the counter attack in the speed of his players, where I think um, Arteta wants to play more like Pep a little bit more ticker tacker and I, I much prefer the, the faster, slightly more direct football, what, what Conte. And his mentality of winning, for me, a heart on the sleeve, is way more interesting for press conferences. And a, a, a maybe the fans get on board more, right? You've got to feel that connection with the manager. And I think that's important to have. And for me, yeah, Conte, hands down. But he has a question for you, Big Steve. So Neil says he will pick Conte. Who do you actually think in terms of... So, do you think Arteta would have been able to improve the sports squad based on the players he has? Do you think Conte's job is a bit easier because maybe the Tottenham squad is a bit, you know, it's been, it's, you could technically argue they had bet, a better squad than Arsenal? It, it's... When you take Tottenham have experience in the side already as well as Conte has experience then you're going to get a better result. Uh, Conte's, Conte's an established manager. He's won stuff. So putting him in direct comparison with Arteta is a bit unfair because Arteta's still learning on the job. Yeah, so... It, with, Why with, is it unfair, though? You're picking a manager of, of two teams battling for the top four. Mm -hmm. Like You can't say it's unfair. Arteta's had a few years now and he's worked under under Pep. Conte's yeah. had to earn those, those badges and sort of being a top manager. See, we have to compare any manager in the Premier League apart from with their caretakers, right? They, they've, mm. they've got that. So you can't say it's unfair to compare the two. Oh, I would say, because at the end of the day, Conte's, Conte's a, an established manager. He's won trophies. Yeah, but they're both managers, though. They're both. Yeah, yeah. they're both managers. So, yeah. so, what, so, what, so what are you going to compare? Conte will always win. Well, yeah, that's right, because he's the exactly. better manager. That's the end of the argument. It's a, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so then it's not fair to compare. You're not. There's no, no comparison. No, it's fair to compare. And the answer to the question is, Conte's a better manager. That's the that's the answer. You, you can't. What, what does that mean? So just, just don't compare them both to Michael Jackson because they're yeah, both so, like so, 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 so then it's oh. so, no. So then it's an irrelevant question because Conte will always get better. Oh, what? what, what okay. So well, no, but the, that well, that's Julian's problem. But the, the question here, the, the question here is the question here is simple, based on. In terms of the application that the managers have done on their team, Ateta went through the young player where, you know, and you can, and I mean, you could say Conte is better because of all the stuff he has won. But if you look at what Ateta has achieved in terms of taking young players, inexperience, making them play a particular style of football, competing with finishing in the top four, possibly third, if you say, I mean, if you say a manager, so I mean, if we're talking about managerial comparisons, then there are many. I mean, Ferguson will probably be the best manager ever. There will be no. You, there's no point mentioning another manager's name, but based on just that application, the, 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 what I'm trying to understand here is, people kind of look at Conte and say, "Oh yeah, it's Conte." So you you know you expect Spurs to do well because you know he's a wonderful manager. But if you look at the squad he has, do you think do you think Conte? With the inexperienced Arsenal, the Arsenal players have, do you think Arsenal will be finishing fourth spot if Conte was the manager? That's the question. Well, there's two two points to that question, Jay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to answer both. One, Conte uh, is at Spurs, so they haven't got the youth that, that Arteta has and when he brought through it. And the remit was top four when he came in, or top five at least, right? Getting them from there. So he, he does, he's not going to bring in a youth player in the situation he was in, he needs reliable players that he knows he's going to get, which is why he went Kulovesky for former is a young, players. Right? Is a youth player. Yeah, but he went for former players that are good. And, and we're, we're now saying that Arsenal have got a youth team. They've got like players that are playing full international games now. They're not they're not like 18-year-old newbies. They've been playing for a good few years. And I think we're, we're still saying they're far too inexperienced for what they are. We're top, top four, battling for top four. They're not inexperienced players. They're not coming out on like... Um, Lukangu, is it Lukangu? The, the the younger player that isn't really as, anywhere near as good as as Saka and Emil Smith Rowe, but these are the top top players. So it's a little bit unfair to say, oh, he's bringing them through. Maybe next season, actually, Conte goes. We've got some good youth that we need to get into the team. But this, but coming in when he came in, isn't the time to embed youth when they've got a remit of look, we want to be top four, which is why he was brought in. Right? There was no, can you bring in the youth up? This is the remit. This is what we go through. Harry Kane was a youth player. L look at him. You know, like someone brought him through, but he he's no longer. So I don't, I don't know. I think it's it's almost a 
a, a nonsensical question of asking where somebody comes through. And obviously, Ferguson is the best ever manager, but how many times did he get to bring those players through? He didn't bring a player in when he, for, for winning games. He'd brought them through slowly and carefully and actually integrated everybody in the squad and then played them gradually in. You know, David Beckham didn't just start 100 games. He made, he earned those rights. And I think Arteta is similar to doing that at Arsenal. But obviously, Conte's been there for a lot less time and he hasn't had that luxury yet. Next season, maybe he brings in three or four youth players that we've never heard of. Troy Parrott comes back. Kareem's happy. Finally. Uh, finally. Do you know what I mean? He starts playing some games. <laughs> I don't know, right? Finally. There's, there's, well, well, we've he's spoken he's about that guy in a so. long time. You know what? I think <laughs> a long time. I think Conte has, has, has the harder remit, to be honest, based on multiple criteria. So one, you're looking at finance, yeah? So like, it's like what Neil said, he's got a kind of remit for now. Get it done now or you're out probably, basically. Whereas, whereas Ateta's got the, well, you can do it in three, four years, whatever. He's got he's got time. There's, there's no pressure on Ateta, first of all. Finance-wise, Arsenal spent big last summer and Arsenal do spend big sometimes. Pepe, 72 million, flop, but still 72 million. Spurs don't do that, yeah? Generally speaking, squad... Yeah, we've called the flat in Arsenal, got a younger squad, but it's with a plan. Spurs had established players, world-class players like Kane, Song, etc. So then the pressure is for them to deliver. In terms of ambition, it looks like, or I don't think Arsenal have that much ambition, but they seem to have more ambition than than that than Spurs in as much as that they have they have a they have some sort of plan that they they work into for long term um Long long term success, and you and with Spurs, you don't know because they will sack Mourinho before final. So it's like they almost value money over success. Who who does that? It, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and then you're looking at in terms of a club status, Arsenal are technically well. Ten, Arsenal have the bigger a bigger club, bigger heritage, blah blah blah. Albeit, or no, it's facts. Come on, let's be honest. Yeah, it's, 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 sorry, Kareem, but it's facts. Don't worry, they're, yeah. don't worry. They're just they're just sports fans. Yeah, 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 sorry, but, keep, whereas keep, whereas. Keep. Spurs are, you know, the little brother, and um, um, they've they've even got their own terminology. It's, oh, you've done a Spursy. It's a bit Spursy. That says it all. If, if you if you've got a, if you've got a terminology, then you're a bit of a waste man club. Um, and then in terms of the remaining fixtures, actually, I think Arsenal have harder ones because they're they're fighting people that are they're playing people who are fighting for their life. So like Leeds, Spurs, Newcastle, ever none of those games are going to be easy unless Leeds and Everton are already relegated, which they're not going to be. So that's going to be a tough one. Liverpool and Arsenal are hard, I but Burnley and Norwich I tell you, should I, be winning. I'll tell you what, for, I mean, the Agro one is, is an Arsenal fan that pretty much always goes against Arsenal, which is quite confusing. Huh? Where, where Steve, where Steve is the one that is all positive and all, you know, everything nice and spicy. I'm realistic. Steve, big Steve, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What is the one fault or something you actually think Ateta has gotten wrong this season because you don't seem to mention that unlike Mike that mentions everything Ateta does wrong even probably the way he pees so what's the one thing that you think you know Ateta has gotten wrong this season that he should have done um, the way he's used the squad in terms of giving minutes to players that are not involved for example um, look at someone like Pepe um if Pepe has to come in in the last few games of the season and affect the game, when was the last time he came on the pitch for Arsenal? It's not every... Saka doesn't have to play every single minute of every single game. He can give him 10, 15 minutes here and there. There's been games since the turn of the year that he could have done that to. Um, he's made some mistakes when he put Xhaka at left back. Um, he And he, when you lost Partey that, when he was injured, you've basically taken out the centre of your midfield. He, he had other options. He's played Tavares away from home, but he wasn't playing him at home. That's putting more pressure on the player. So he he has made mistakes, but he's going to make them. He's inexperienced. At the end of the day, is this, is this one of the end justifies the means? I mean, Neil, would you, do you still think Saka is washed and finished as you always describe him? I'm still, he's still got no end product. I and mean, we've got to stop saying that Alteta's inexperienced, right? He is not inexperienced. He's the Premier League manager with more than a season in there. You, the, he, you can't, can't say that he's inexperienced and he should be. He's inexperienced every, compared every, to the other managers. Well, no, not well, compared to well, the one at Leeds. Marsh, he's had like four weeks. His honeymoon period's well and truly over. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, but it's, not, just, it's not just about the inexperience. But when, when you say it's inexperience, he's going to come across situations that he hasn't had before. He's not had a, a managerial 
um, career where he's been at different clubs. If I'm at and, work, and, he's right, at and I don't mm-hmm. do something, and they go, oh, you've been here two years now. Oh, yeah, but you haven't come across that. So you're, I'm not getting that late, late excuse. I could get that excuse in four weeks, maybe, maybe six at a push. But I'm mm-hmm. at a Premier League club getting paid 50, 60, 70, 100,000 pounds a week to manage a team. Mm-hmm. I've got one job, it's manage it. If I've made the wrong decision, I need to learn from that on the first player, not the second, yeah. third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and go, oh, yeah, sorry, it's a young squad, I'm a bit inexperienced. His major issue that he did wrong this season was not signing a striker and letting a banner go. Regardless if he was scoring or not, that was a major faux pas from him and he should have had a striker whether he loaned one in got one from the reserves put some extra faith in Pepe done something to to, to bridge that gap it's, that's unexcusable as a non-Arsenal fan I'm looking at it going who am I who's wearing the shirts or just stick Martinelli up there and have faith in him every week and, and he's not done any of that so he doesn't have faith in in a, in a, in a true number nine preach he's Neil in preach and, he can't finish. So I, I've had enough of excuses for Arteta, right? He is the manager. He's got the job. I, I, I mean, want to talk I mean, about not, Leeds and Marsh and how they're going to go they're down. Not, <laughs> they're not, they're not, okay, so if I remove the word inexperience, yeah, how does that change? He it? makes mistakes. He, yeah, he, honestly, I said, yeah. no, but I, but no, I said he makes mistakes. mistakes. I said he made mistakes. I've said he's made mistakes. JJ directly because said to me, I'm always, I'm always positive. Yeah, I'm always positive about Arsenal. So, but I clearly said there's made mistakes. Arrogance. First Arrogance of all, mistakes. first, Big Steve, Big Steve, these boys have missed you, man. That's that's what it means. Man. These boys have missed you. <laughs> I mean, they, they, this positivity, they haven't, had, they haven't, they haven't had it in a while. <laughs> Dunk. I mean, I'll ask you, I'll ask you this because I'm sure the, the, the Arsenal boys wouldn't actually answer properly. And Neil. I'm not quite sure about Neil. What is the one thing you will criticise Conte for this season? I mean, there's still some games to play, but so far, what you're seeing with Spurs, what's the one thing you can criticise him? I think I think what I was saying earlier, like he didn't he didn't have an impact quick enough for this season. Like he he's a top manager. He should have what's come in. What's with you and this new manager groove? And <laughs> you know, what what's you, <laughs> What's this uh, but new like manager? Him, well, we can talk about new managers. Look at Michael Jackson, man. <laughs> we can talk about new managers, but like if you bring Conte in, he's a world-class manager. He's done it all. He should be able to like fix things fast, like faster than other managers. So for for this season in particular, he he was a bit slow on the uptake uh, to get that team sorted out this season. Like how many how many games did he have before they really started firing? Is it like 10, 15? Like for a, for a manager as good as him, uh, I, I think he should have gotten firing quicker than that. That would be the the negative, I'd say. Uh, and just on the situation, comparing the two, yeah, they're, they're, they're at different stages of their journey. So like it, Steve was saying, it might be a bit unfair to compare. You you can still compare them. And, and even though I've gone for Spurs for the top four, if you asked me who was doing the more impressive job, I would say Arteta. Like he's up against Conte with probably a better squad with some top class players in there and he is trying to bring the youngsters through so for me I, I would say like Arteta is doing a more impressive job this season I like it that's why I like ask you <laughs> the angry one since Arteta does a lot of wrong for you man first of all I'll start with let's I mean you seem to like Conte what is the one thing you can actually praise Arteta Wait, for no it's not that like I necessarily like Conte or dislike Arteta it's just if man flops I'm going to say he flops isn't it what, what should I? I'm not okay. Steve. Okay, all right, good. But what's the one thing you can actually give him praises for? Ateta, that is. It's like when he gets it right, yeah, he gets it right. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things he's done in this season. But what I'm saying is, a lot of the time when he gets it right, it seems like it's kind of a mistake. Not really a mistake. Like it's he has no other choice. Oh, you know what? Um, let me just play this guy Saka uh, on the left. Let me just play on the only earth to hell with it. Fuck it. Let me just play the I ain't got nothing to lose. And then it was, and then it works out. And then everyone, everyone's clapping for him. But but most of those things people were, were saying a couple of games before. So look, like like Duncan said, the guy's got a, a young squad, new squad, or at least he's got new players in. He's still gelling the team. So let's, let's forget about young for now. He's brought six new players in and he's trying to gel that in this season. So forget about young or old, whatever. Yeah. So he's done that. But then and they're, and they're competing. Yeah, you will say Man United are dog shit right now. Let's be honest. Yeah, Chelsea are messing around, and are, and some of the other teams who should be challenging aren't challenging as much. But you, you can only beat who you can beat on the day. So, I think he's done really well, and it is what he's doing is impressive. It's just that he probably would have sealed top four by now if he hadn't made so many rookie mistakes this season, like the Bamiyang, like the El Neni, like the Xhaka, but stuff we've said. Those are rookie mistakes that Conte not going to make. 
or, 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 okay. or somebody like Pep or whoever. All right. Well, I think the North London derby will determine a lot, depending on what happens to Spurs at Liverpool. We're lose. And if Leeds can, and if and, and if Leeds can do something at the Emirates, I mean, Doug needs that. Doug needs that wonderful, wonderful favor, and hopefully Leeds pull something out of the bag. But before the North London derby, which will probably be in about what two weeks. Looking at, there's a lot of comparison with oh, who has done better as manager, who scored, who's this, which player is better, who has a better team. So in a three-five-two formation, well, let's get the best team between Arsenal and Tottenham. I said three-five-two this time because I mean the last time I mentioned four-four-two. Oh my God! Somebody almost pulled their, all their hair out. But we'll start with Neil. We'll start with Neil. Neil, it a uh, combined Arsenal Tottenham team. Please, could you tell your first 11, three, three formation, three, five, two? Yeah. Um, Leno? <laughs> <laughs> I just sat to see their faces for that. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Laurie Singal. Okay. I think he is um, uh, a more reliable, trusted keeper for me. Uh, you want to play three at the back. I mean, that's a hard one because Ben White doesn't watch football and it really irks me more than anything else. So let's stick in Gabriel, regardless of his mistake that he made on the weekend. Um, who's the... Is it Romero for for Spurs? Mm-hmm. He looks decent, like a proper decent centre-back. It's really hard to find three decent centre-backs in that uh, amongst those two, which is probably the hardest bit um, from them. But I would stick Ben White in there just for the fact that he communicates quite well with Gabriel. So I'd have three at the back. I think it'd be an absolute nightmare with those two having three at the back. Um, you want five in the centre, five across the middle. Yes, And then sir. two up front. So yes, let's sir. go with two up front, right? Because it's got to be Spurs because Arsenal don't have forwards. So you've got Kane and Son. Mm-hmm. There can't be anyone else uh, uh, from there. Um, what's the, I can't remember what the new guy's name for Spurs to be able to pronounce it correctly. Bentaco or Kulusevsky? Which one? Kulusevsky, that's the one. <laughs> Kulusevsky on the on the left. Um, I think I would end up sticking. I hate to say, but I'd have Emil Smith Rowe on the right, just to cut in. I think that would be quite interesting. Uh, Bentaco in the centre of the park, along with everyone's favourite Jacka, because the man, for some reason brings up players and makes everyone else look better. I'm not sure if it's because he's worse or not, uh, but he seems to. And uh, um, everyone needs a party in the centre of the park, right? So I'd have three really quite defensive midfielders in that. And I think that, for me, would probably work as the best of a team if what I'm looking to have, and that's what the formation that I go on, 3-5-2, which I'd never pick. But yeah, okay. I mean, I mean, I like you. I like the I like the players you've selected, but the Saka in the middle is, is strange for me. But well, Saka, you're the manager, the Jaka, Jaka, not Xhaka. Oh, Jaka. Oh, sorry, Xhaka. sorry, Xhaka, sorry. Yeah. No, Saka didn't get in the team, man. Yeah, sorry, sorry, wow, sorry. Man, sorry and I, I want people that can finish or at least cross. <laughs> you know, um, All right. Pens. Cool, cool. I'll go straight to the angry one since he's shaking his head. Probably doesn't agree with Team Neil's selection. No, you, but the angry one, what's your team? 3-5-2. No, your team's shit, first of all. And Saka did a cross yesterday for an assist, so shut up. Anyway. Oh, we did a cross. <laughs> I, I want these stats at the end of the season. Break. Anyway, okay. So I'm putting in for my goalkeeper, Ramsdale. Rago biased. I don't care what anyone says. I don't know if he's better than Lurie is, but he's going in anyway. I don't care. He's going in. Um, I agree with Neil, Gabriel. I ain't putting Ben White in because if you don't watch... He, he doesn't watch he's, football. He's just a waste man. <laughs> no, and also he falls asleep a lot. He's just there. Like, he's just like away with the fairies sometimes. Nah, so I'm putting in Romero. He looks like a cruncher. I love it. So I'm going to have to... The other Spurs centre-backs are whack. So I'm going to have to put a, a full-back in there. Probably Tierney or something, man, to be honest. Or maybe... or Yeah, probably Tierney. So that's the back three. Um... Across the across the uh, middle of the park, obviously I'm going to put Partey in there. I'm going to put Hoiberg. I'm going to put Partey and Hoiberg together. Yeah, defensive two ahead of them. You could put Odegaard or ESR. Um, uh, I'll go with Odegaard because he plays more than ESR at the moment. Um, up front is uh, Sane and uh, Sane, <laughs> Kane and Son. Um, uh, on the right has to be has to be Saka. 
obviously. Now on the left, oh, I mean, I'm it's between Martinelli and ESR. I'd probably start Martinelli. So yeah, that's my team. I'm, Ooh, actually, nice. I'm actually going to play that on FIFA later on tonight, by the way. And try it out to yeah, see how it I'll works. Let you know if I win or not. Let's try it. Wait, so I want to see you buy Spurs players. Actually, I haven't, I haven't, got, I haven't got any. <laughs> I got Kane once. Uh, it was, it was. It's going to be painful. It was alright though. Dunk, what's your team? So in goal, we want someone that wants nothing to do with goals. So we could put Lacazette in there, <laughs> <laughs> but I will go with. Uh, I, I will go with Ramsdale. I'm, I'm going for youth and English. I'm going for them. Laurie Laurie hasn't got wow. much left in the tank. This is some it's, it's, patriotism straight up. He's still doing English. Are we picking a team for the future or the best players for like this season? I mean, I've got no idea what's going so, on. Sorry, are, are we allowed to disagree with you, Neil? Or is, is that not <laughs> no, allowed? No, I picked the eleven, and that was it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, Ram standing goal. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I, I'll put Gabriel in there. Um, okay. and Romero is doing a good job I think I'm going to go along the lines of Mike with a fullback in there as well uh, I'm going to put Emerson, Emerson Royal in there I think he's been uh, pretty decent the last uh, few games for Spurs so we'll, we'll throw him in the back there uh, on the right I'm going to put Saka in he can do a bit of a defensive shift as well out there on the left I'll go with Neil and Kulusevski uh, nice bit of a attacking option there creates loads of chances Um yeah, up top, you, you can't really do anything other than uh, Kane and Son up top uh, when it comes to these two teams. Uh, in the middle, oh, this is where it gets a, a little bit tricky. Again, I'll, I'm going to throw ESR in there for uh, young English. Go go along those lines. Can can create a few things. He He's shown some really good moments this season. There was, uh, what was it, the game? It was, it was last week or the week before, there was a chance where he didn't score, but he just mugged off about four defenders in the box, like, he, the lad's got some skills anyway. He's going to come good. Uh, so we'll go with ESR for the more defensive element. I'm going to go with, I'm going to put Bentecourt of Spurs in there uh, and I will throw, I'll, I'll squeeze in Odegaard in my team as well. So we'll go for the, the two more attacking midfielders and the one defensive. Very nice. I mean, Big Steve, you don't have any of the um, your Ireland brothers in, so you can't use all the patriotic thing that you know <laughs> Doc has just done. So let's see, with, let's see with the team that you, the team you go with. Ramsdale, in goal. Ramsdale. Um, back three of Gabriel, um, Romero, and Tomiyasu. Ooh, um, interesting. On the right would be Tomiyasu, even if he hasn't played for a long time. Or you just. From what I've seen this season, you'll be him. okay because he can play centre back and he plays both feet as well. Um, on the right would be Saka, in the middle would be Hoiberg, Party, and Odegaard. On the left, I'll come back to that. Um, up top will be Son and Kane. Um, on the left, I'm tempted to go with. <sighs> The fact that you're thinking Bro, about it tells us that you're not quite sure. You, I'm you not just, sure. You, I'm not I sure. I think this is an experiencedness. That's the problem. He's a bit <laughs> inexperienced with dealing with Premier League players. So let's give him a better chance, right? Because it might be some youth and he might make a mistake. So hey, we'll let you have this one, Steve. Uh, but he right. needs yeah, to learn uh, from this time. <laughs> I'll probably, I'll probably, to be honest, go with some, probably go with Tierney on the left. Huh? <laughs> on the left of on the left of a five. Out of every player that we've got on but we'll, we'll let him have it. Like, it's an experience. Martinelli. Right? And you're picking Tierney left back. It, it's his team. It's his team. It's his team, Mike. That's what that's what he wants. Okay, okay. By the way, do you notice it? I want someone who goes down. I want someone who goes down and crosses it in with their left foot. That's what I want. Yes, I doesn't use his left foot. Martinelli doesn't use his left foot. Neither player, neither their player crosses. Saka plays on the right. Pepe didn't. Because I don't... Pepe... <laughs> someone I'd rather, attack. He's going to say play. anyone. Tien. <laughs> all right, all right. By the way, nobody... He's well, a good player. Nobody, I, I, I'll write him. He's a good player. How come nobody picked Ben White? Like, nobody. No, no, no. Neil did. They never. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah he did. That, that showed that... Gabriel Romero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shows that Neil didn't know anything about football. He can tell you what's on Netflix. That's why he's got to be in. I'm actually surprised nobody went with Martinelli on the left or I right. It's crap. Uh, I went with him on the left. No, you, you went you went with Saka on ESR. No, no, no. no. I said uh, between Martinelli or ESR, but I'm going to go with Martinelli. Oh, okay. 
Martin Daniel. Well, there you have, it, ladies and gentlemen. the The boys have picked the uh, you know combining level between Spurs and Arsenal. That game is on the twelfth of May, Thursday, the twelfth of May. So it'll be interesting. It'll set you up all nice for the weekend. Whoever wins, we should um, create those games on FIFA and see whose team would win. Mine would, by the way, because I'm the only one that plays FIFA. Just. Okay, just you're just saying. <laughs> Dunk who plays yeah, oh, FIFA loads. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a FIFA good. boss, mate. You want yeah. some of your dunks? Yeah, yeah. You want yeah. some of it? <laughs> All right. Is it PS4? I'll, I'll take you down with Galway United, mate. Uh, <laughs> well, as well. Okay, let's do that offline. There's only one. There's only one way to find out, boys. There's only one way to find out. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, some props for Teta, some props for Conte. Some people think he's making mistakes. Some people don't think you shouldn't use the word inexperience with Ateta. He's a manager, he's doing the job, and we shall see how all this plays out. Arsenal play Leeds on Sunday, and that'll be an interesting one. And Tottenham play Liverpool on Saturday. So we shall see what goes on. But before we actually go anywhere, we're moving to the next segment of the show and we shall discuss the weekend results. So let us start with Wolves Brighton. I'll start with you, Dunk. As Wolves, have they given up season over? Let's just, you know, we've done well. And or is Brighton just in top form? Uh, I think it's a bit harsh to say like a club's give, <laughs> given up. Like, well, they, you know that um, has. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Wolves, they, they're they not giving up, but they're, they're just on a slump at the minute. Um, they're, they're not getting the results, so probably heads are down. Uh, again, we, we were saying last episode, like fair play to Brighton. They they went on a big run where they, they weren't getting many wins. Uh, a hell of a lot of draws, a few defeats here and there. But over the last few weeks, they've, they've been on some seriously good form like for a team of their standard uh they're they're into the top half of the table now so yeah i'm just going to put that down to yeah Wol- wolves in poor form things aren't going for them and brighton are on a really good run at the minute so credit credit to brighton for that result oh yeah best ever premier league position at the moment of course they can improve on that moving forward so we shall see what happens McAllister turned Trossard, which is a play I'm surprised a lot of people are not trying to get in their team. And Besoma, which if he continues his form, I don't think he'll stay there much longer. Moving on to Watford Burnley. Neil, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson is doing the things, man, doing the things. Do you think Burnley will stay up after winning 2-1 at Watford? I mean, this is more of one for Dunk. They've got the uh, honeymoon new manager in at the moment, right? I really hope Burnley go down purely for sucking dice, right? And I mean that in the nicest possible way. I don't think... Dice have been done so well for them and at the moment it looks vindicated that getting rid of him is a good decision. And I don't necessarily want that for Dice if that makes sense. I don't nothing against the Burnley fans and I know they didn't choose it and them to stay it would be really, really nice. But I think there's other teams in there that probably deserve to go down a bit more that sacked an Argentinian manager, for instance, that was a legend in the game. Um, I think they probably deserve to, to go down just, just a tad more. Well, so we shall Burnley, see. Burnley, Burnley were good, though. They, uh, and they deserve They're really good. Win. Held on, last-minute win. I mean, it's just a matter of time for Watford. It's just a matter of time. Leeds Man City. Woo, Man City 4 0. Leeds started well, running down the flanks, doing all those good stuff. By the end of the day, Man City is just winning every game step by step. Big Steve, do you see City slipping up, giving Liverpool the chance? Um, they'll, they may draw a game between now and the end of the season, but I don't see them losing. Uh, but I think Liverpool's big game is against Tottenham because um, Tottenham are capable of turning over the big sides but I can see as I said see can see City drawing the game but I don't see them losing before the end of the season they just keep churning it out and that, and some it's a bit unfair sometimes for me because they don't get the props that Liverpool seem to get in the press because what City are doing is impressive as well Speaking about new managers or not new managers but managerial you know influence the way Crystal Palace have been playing this season, it should you know should be mentioned up there with what Vieira has done once again with the resources. And the one thing that he has done is he has actually made Zaha a bit more free. So he's actually scoring more goals. He has 12 goals this season. Crystal Palace beats Southampton 2-1. The angry one, Vieira, mentioned in the top managerial influences this season. Yeah, I mean, he's 
turn Crystal Palace into a what seemed to be a better team, more attacking uh, and also more uh, solid. He's getting decent results against big boys as well. Although, to be fair, Palace have always been able to do that. And he's uh, invincible, so I ain't going to say nothing bad about the guy. Um, so, yeah, keep going, man. Come to Arsenal in a few years once we get rid of our tether. That's it. Neil, you mentioned you mentioned Vera earlier on, and he said oh, he has done some good stuff. You have Eberieze, Ulisse, Zaha, very skillful players that are just being produced in that part of London. Do you see London. any of those guys breaking into, well, apart from Zaha, he, he plays for Ivory Coast. Do you see the likes of Eberieze or Ulisse breaking into the Engl England squad anytime soon? No. <laughs> no, I don't I'm not at all. I mean, uh, performing well at Crystal Palace in the mid-table prem team is, you've got to really like, not just perform well, you've got to be up there with 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 the best of them. Like when that season, Zaha got sold to, to United, so that's the level of performance. And I don't think anyone's quite there. They're good for Palace, don't get me wrong, and Palace are having a, a great season. I don't think anyone's kind of standing out and going, staking the claim. I think we all talk about Ward Prowse, well, not me, but you guys talk about Ward Prowse have been a, a great, a, a good England player, uh, and he's standing out, right, head and shoulders above uh, the rest of his team, and that's probably for me. You, you need to be talking about players for week in and week out to say that they're going to be. Conor, Conor Gallagher would be one of the players that I, I think potentially beats a Chelsea player, um, which is which is the problem. And I think Patrick Vieira has made well, the, the fundamentals were already in, right? And I think uh, Hodgson did a great, great job of doing that. Uh, now Vieira is reaping those rewards. He's carried on making them hard to beat and then adding a little bit of extra flair. But Zaha's one of those players that's probably had a lot of potential for a lot of seasons and, and, and never really lived up to it. Good at a smaller club. Well, we shall see. We shall see. This one's for you, Dunk. This one is for you. Everton, Chelsea. <laughs> I mean, you were uh, you were complaining about you know Frank Lampard. You complain about he doesn't have the new manager bounce. But do you? I mean, I'm trying not to be biased here. But do you see? Do you see them staying up? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no, I st I still don't. I still don't think he's going to get them firing in enough games uh, towards the end of the season to keep them up. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty. Uh, all I can say is I hope Chelsea are going to roll over that well when Leeds play them in a couple of weeks. That's all I can say. You know, if if they're giving out free wins, we'll take one as well. Well, it was a good game and Everton took their chance. Great save from Pickford that kept them in the game. And Chelsea, the angry one, considering the fact that you picked them at the start of the season, what do you think is wrong with those guys? What do, what do you think? What's, what's going wrong? Well... Like somehow they've become un unbalanced and stuff. It's weird. Like they brought Lukaku in, looked like they were doing all right. Then he became a bollard, so then didn't do anything. Then they took him out. Then they're playing other players in. But it's like ever since they'd lost their momentum or their their mojo, they just can't find a consistent rhythm. I know they lost fullbacks, but I mean, James is back now. Um, I think she was still out, but it's just... It, like they've got really good players and they've got a good manager, but somehow the squad is still in balance because the, the, the manager and the squad don't relate to the performances that they should be getting. But on their day, they can do whatever, like like like, like win a Champions League, but then then, then you're going to lose to Everton. I don't know. It's, I, 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 I feel like they've, like they've not given up, but it's like, ah, well, next season. I thought, it, uh, I, I kind of agree with it with a couple of points there, but I'm unsure of what the tactics are. They played like 3-5-2, um, almost against um, Everton and it was really really unbalanced I thought you've got Havertz up front who needs to be there by himself or if he's got someone with him there's, there was no width it was really lacking that initially they were playing like a 3-4-3 three, three, or and, and I think that's really unbalanced with not having three at the top it just became a really scrappy game and he didn't even bring Lukaku on to try and get uh, a winner which was really bizarre he obviously he's done. doesn't like Lukaku Lukaku's done mate one of them's done at the end of the season, right? It's either Lukaku <laughs> or Tuchel. One, one, one of them or both of them, you'd be surprised. Yeah. It, in it's all surprised. seriousness, Sorry, no, that, Mike, Mike mentioned it earlier with Arsenal's fixtures. That, that is what happens when teams play, other teams fighting for their life at this stage of the season. Like They're going to they're gonna scrap it and you, you're going to see some results like that in the, in the running. Okay. So, some bad news for Arsenal then. We're playing two people like that. <laughs> this, one's, this, this, one's, this one's for you. 
Big Steve, Tottenham, Leicester. Interesting game. Son and Kane again with a wonderful, I said it again, wonderful combination. <laughs> Has Leicester, is Brendan Rodgers, he's another, I mean, there are a lot of teams this season that just, to me, just feel like, yeah, we're going to stay up. Let's just, you know, move. Let's let's just look forward to the next season. I think Leicester's one of them. Yes, I know he had a lot of injuries, but Brendan Rodgers always strikes me as a manager that gets somewhere, gets his peak, and that's it. Is that the case for them this season, or Tottenham was just too good? Uh, Tottenham are too good, and then Leicester had to get European game in the week, um, and they need to win in their second leg. But has Rodgers reached his peak? I understand what you're saying about that when he gets to a club, reaches his peak, but because he's had the injuries, it's a bit hard to judge this season. Um, they've been more inconsistent than anything, which is surprising because what they normally do is show consistency in the first three parts of the season and then in the last quarter just fall away a bit. But this season, they've been really up and down. So I think that's mainly due to the injury. So I'll say that he hasn't quite reached his peak at the club yet. Um, and next season should be better. Okay. Liverpool showing the luck of champions or champions to be winning 1-0 at Neil's favourite Premier League team. Should that have been a foul on Shaw, Neil? Milner's tackle before they went to score? No. I mean, yeah, you can call him. If, if you're debating something so so much of, uh, and what it has been, then I think you just go with the fact that, that no, you either get it or you don't get it. You still got 90 minutes in the game, right? You can have one incident, but you can't let that define the whole of it. Newcastle need, and I don't think that was a bad result for, obviously losing is not a good result, but 1-0, if you had looked at that six months ago, right, that would have been four or five nil that game. So Eddie Howe going into that, competing with Liverpool at any particular level that he can get out of it, I think is testament to how well Newcastle have done with getting players in at uh, Christmas and between December and January, panic buying, but getting quality players in and getting the most out of a team. That's what I would, you know, call good management and maybe a contender for manager of the year. Yeah, look at that. Great manager, isn't he, Neil? Yeah. <laughs> Great. I mean, I always liked him. He's Brit, he's English. He, he, they play good football and it's attacking football, right? And tries to be on the front foot. And I think that's that's a testament to, to Eddie Howe. And I think he will do good there. And I think, I really hope they give him a good chance. Well, new manager bounce. Well, it's not that new anymore. Villa v Norwich. Villa sealing Norwich's fate, sending them back down, telling them goodbye. Uh, wonderful, nice goals from Watkins and Ings. Big dunk. You impressed with Steven Gerrard? And do you think there's more to come from him next season? Yeah, like obviously they, they've had a bit of a dip the, the few games before that. But overall, definitely, yeah, impressed with Gerrard. Again, like put it into context, he was brought in because Villa were were in danger of being relegated. They were they were down near the bottom. They were scrapping around, and he he's got them not entirely safe yet. But he's got them into that mid range pack, like straight out the gate in his first like half season, whatever he's had there. Uh, so yeah, I'm still going to give uh, Stevie G the my, my seal of approval. Uh, so I, I'd say he can he can kick on from there. That Villa should be looking at yeah move, moving into the the top half of the table next season. Probably Europe's a bit bit a bit of a push for them, but we'll see what he does in the transfer market. He got Coutinho in, so maybe he can pull a few more strings from contacts and make them a really good team. There you go, Stephen G. You have Dunk's seal of approval. That is mighty ha. in the ma- is mighty in the markets these days. Very mighty. How poor Norwich though, right? They, they get a manager that's sacked from a relegation, almost threatened club to get him in to what? I don't understand that Norwich's mentality of what they've looked at. I get maybe a project or a program, but they've literally gone for an experienced manager who wasn't doing great at another club and taken them down with no fight or guile. It's to me, they might as well have kept of who they kept with or had a, oh, this is what we're looking to do. We need to shift it and give the fans something. But Man, they've been toothless. They're, they're, like they're, one game they're, they're a strange club. Like, they're, they're the definition of a yo-yo club. Like you watch them, when they go to the championship, they, they rip people up. Like they're far too good for the championship. So again, who are we talking about? Yeah, we're talking about Burnley when, when Dyche was sacked. I mean, clubs like that, they, they've got to look at teams like Brighton and Brentford that come into the premiership and can actually like get out of that zone. So it, it is a bit strange how they yo-yo so much and they, they don't really do much when they're in the premiership. Well, there's they did have that, the choice. Two clubs that do that. 
Fulham and Norwich. Yep. They did have the choice between Dean Smith or Frank Lampard. So, um, I don't know. Either the choice way, is wrong. Either, <laughs> way, not, either way, none of the managers have Dunk's seal of approval. So, the angry one, this is for you, man. Arsenal, West Ham, or West Ham, Arsenal. Interesting game. West Ham played in Europe, saving players and all that good stuff. But impressed with the Arsenal win? I'm, I'm impressed with the result, yeah. We won, so that's great. But performance was a bit dog shit, to be honest. But hey, like like the guy said, you got to win ugly. At this point, at this stage of the season, to be honest, any stage of the season, you've got to get a win and then, and then sort out the performance next time. So, I mean, two centre-backs score as well. Um, second goal, there was a hint of what well, some people would argue did, um, what's his name? Who was it? Was it, was it Gabriel? Gabriel might have, not Gabriel, who, who handballed it? I think it's holding. holding. He might have touched Holding's hand, but he, he didn't know nothing about it anyway. Mm, maybe. But anyway, two set, piece, um, two set pieces. One cross from Saka. Uh, the other one from Martinelli. Um, uh, yeah, and centre-back scored, obviously. They scored. By the way, can I just say, yeah, Gabriel scored as many goals as Lacazette. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He scored as many goals as Lacazette. Uh, in open play. Well, set pieces. But yeah, so that is a win. So that's what all you can do is win and move on. It doesn't really matter. I would love us to play shit for the next four games and win every game. I don't care. Let's get top four and we'll worry about performances next season. Okay, moving on to fixtures, ladies and gentlemen. And my United is currently winning 3 0. Nobody's asking, but just saying, just in case you really want to know, wants to know the about score. That. The Varane just got Ronaldo Varane, penalty. Yeah. And Varane, yes. And it, it's Varane a dead game, dead rubber. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> you know about being dead soon when you go down, Dunk. You would know. You would know. Don't worry about that. <laughs> all right, we're well, moving on. Specific games that we just want to quickly touch on that's coming out in the Premier League. And we go to Saturday, the 7th of May, Chelsea Wolves. Now, I bring this up because of how Chelsea is, you know, flip-flopping. And Wolves, as I said, probably thinking of next season. The angry one, who wins? Chelsea's at home? In, in my dreams, Wolves will beat Chelsea. And in real life? In, in real life, Wolves beat Chelsea. No, they draw, they draw, they draw, they draw, they draw, they draw. They draw. <laughs> All right, the angry one goes for a draw. Dunk? Uh, in that one, because of Wolves' poor runner form, I'd say Chelsea in, in like a bad game, probably something like 1-0. But again, it, I, I'd like them to lose. I'd like them to get out of that top four. Disgraceful team, losing to Everton. <laughs> Big Steve? Score draw. Nil. Yeah, there is one point, Duncan, you're missing. If Chelsea lose another game, they're going to have the, they have the bit between their teeth when they come up to Leeds. And that's the only game they win between now and the end of the season. So that's not what you, you want at all. Um, Bruno Mars, I think the uh, commentator called him by accident the other day, rather than Bruno Lars for, uh, at Wolves, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, and I thought of that for the whole season. I don't know how. Um, I think Chelsea will do that. I think they'll change their formation again to, to a 9-1-1 or something. I don't know. But yeah, Chelsea will, will win that easy. Wolves are terrible at the moment. Okay, a team that is in top form versus a team that is already on holiday. Brighton versus Manchester United. Big Steve. <laughs> um, it will be a Brighton win. Okay. Why well, you say it like it was supposed to be surprised? <laughs> no, I was going to say score draw actually, but then I fall back now. Brighton win. Okay. The angry one? Man, you'll win that game now. You'll win all your games to the end of the season. Ooh. What do you see? Um, it's, sorry, I, I said the angry one, right? I'm confused. This is, Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dunk? Uh, again, you can see Man U with a score tonight. Inconsistent. Can do it. Might not do it. I will go for a one-all draw. Okay. And Neil? Yeah, that's right. Inconsistency is the key there. Uh, I like the way Steve makes it sound like the pools. Uh, Scored right <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> I think Brighton will win that game. Okay. All good. Liverpool, Tottenham. Now, this is the one that people say Tottenham have a way of, you know, quenching spirits. Big Steve, Liverpool, Tottenham. Draw. Draw. Big shout. I like it. The angry one. I want them both to lose, man. So I don't know. Um, 
come on, let's get off to Liverpool because they can lose another game somewhere down the line. Liverpool win. Liverpool win. Neil? That's, it's a hard one for Liverpool, right? Because they're still going for everything. So they want to rest players, but they can't at the same time. Um, I think that's going to be a Liverpool win. And Donk. Uh, my, my brain can't cope here. I back Liverpool for the title and Spurs for the top four. Like, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, go for the, I'll go for the draw as well, which, which might uh, kill Liverpool's title ambitions, but maybe Man City will slip up somewhere. Okay, there you have it. On Sunday, the 8th of May, 2 o'clock, Arsenal v Leeds. Dunk. In in my dreams or reality here? <laughs> <laughs> in your dreams. Let's start with your dreams first. Let's start in, in with my, your dreams. In my dreams. No, we, we, have, to, we have to pull our fingers out. Uh, we, we're going to get dirty at Arsenal. We're going to give them a kick around and we're going to win 2-1. Neil? I mean, it's going to depend on how these wide receivers play, right? And the, and the quarterback play. So I think that's the problem. Uh, I think that's going to be Arsenal, four or five, and Ketia, a hat trick, easy. My God. Dead the angry ones. I, I think uh, Arsenal might bottle that game, you know, and get, a, get a, a draw or a loss. I'll go, hopefully, my best case scenario is a, is a draw. Yeah, a draw. Best case, yeah. I think we're gonna flop. We're flopsters, isn't it? No, no bottle. Especially, okay. especially if if if, if Spurs beat um, Liverpool, we'll definitely flop. Even if they lose, we're just flopsters, man. Forget it. It's a draw. It's a draw. Reverse jinx. Big, draw. big, <laughs> big Steve. Arsenal win. Um, if Leeds are playing the high energy that they were doing under Bielsa, then it would have give us a problem. But I think the way Leeds are playing now, Arsenal win. Okay, I mean, Everton plays Leicester, Burnley plays Aston Villa, Leeds plays Arsenal. Interesting at the bottom, and it'll be good to see what happens when those fixtures are played. Dunk, we do hope you're here next season. We do. Player and flop of the week. Player and flop of the week. Let's do that, and then... <sighs> Maguire, let's see if Maguire can go two weeks or three weeks in a row without actually making it. <laughs> the angry one. Okay, play, uh, the player of the week, or whatever, for me, is Richarlison, or Charlison, how you pronounce him, his name, for that. He played, he's, he got him the winner, and he was on fire after that. I'd probably shout out the, the, the Everton fans as well. They were like the 15th man, to be honest, on, on that day. Um, so yeah, that's player of the, of the week. Flop of the week, I've got an on the pitch and off the pitch. So on the pitch, I'd, I'd say flop of the week is Bowen for that Blatant dive trying to get um, Rambo sent off and he got yellow card for it. The other flop of the week is Duncan by association of being a Leeds fan because it was shocking that they were throwing stuff at Grealish and that it was just, it was not what you want to see in football dunks. Explain yourself. Why Dirty Leeds. Exactly. So they're the flops as well. Hope they don't do that when they come to the beautiful Emirates. Dunk, player flop of the week. I'll, I'll stick with my theme of teams. I know it annoys you a little bit, JJ, but we'll, we'll stick with teams. Flop of the week, Chelsea, all of them. All of the Chelsea <laughs> squad, the manager, flops, losing to Everton. Uh, players of the week, again, give it to a team. I'm going to give uh, Brighton some respect this week. Again, just from a, just carrying on a nice run, getting a solid win, scoring three goals there. So Brighton are going to get it from me. Neil. I mean, that, that Everton game was, was outstanding. Gordon was played brilliant. Richardson played brilliant as well. I thought Gordon looks like a good prospect. Hopefully, he'll be snapped up by Wednesday next season. Um, but my my player of the week, now I'm going to go out there, and I don't rate him as a great player, but Pickford, shot stopper, awesome, kept him in that. He deserves player of the week for for the taking it on the face. Any good goalkeeper can save of any uh, extremity they want. And why not the face? So perfect for him. And I think Flopper Week has to go to those Leeds fans for throwing, throwing crap because no one wants that. Regardless of what team, no one wants that in football. And I'm not true football fans. Anyone throwing stuff on the pitch. Duncan was, Duncan was there throwing it himself. I saw him. <laughs> right, they're not proper Leeds fans like me. All right. I, I, I didn't know about the Leeds fans, but so they'll make my flop of the week. Um, and my um, player of the week is Jordan Pickford I know I always diss him and say he's a bit erratic but the saves he pulled off did actually get Everton the points 
Yeah. Just, just mean, one second. Like, we're talking about the Leeds fans. No one mentioned the West Ham fans who supposedly ripped the headsets off some German commentators. Yeah, but that's all. <laughs> oh, in the European game. Yeah, but that's but that's not the Prem, so don't count. <laughs> and 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 it, and it was fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Please subscribe, hit the notification button, follow us on all platforms. And we shall be here next week to give you another sweet, sweet episode.